All right, last video. I think this is number five for chapter three that I'm, I'm going to prepare. Plus, we have the supplemental videos, the book, Learn Smart, Connect to Science, quizzes, so many things to do or, or learn from. All right, so, and you can always email me. And we got the weekly online sessions too, so. Adjusted trial balance for a start company. Use the adjusted start balance to prepare closing entries. Well, I'm going to assume that you have a copy in front of you or you can get one. You know, even if you don't want to print something, you just take a picture of your phone and just have it on your phone while you watch this video. Of course, if you're watching this video on your phone and nothing else, ah, print or... um. I'm trying to go back and forth too, so I think that'll work just as well, or work uh, also. All right, so before we do anything, let's talk about the steps. And I think this is very useful. First off, we're gonna, well, these are the closing entries. So we have accounts, and certain accounts are temporary. And then certain accounts are permanent. Everything that we're dealing with now are temporary accounts. So revenue is temporary. Expenses are temporary. Uh, income summary, if you notice, is used three times. It is temporary. And then dividends are also a temporary account. Um, the, only, the only balance on here that is not per, the temporary is retained earnings okay everything else is temporary and what do we mean by temporary what do we mean why does it matter these terms we close the balances and that means we make the balance go to zero so the beginning of the year revenue is zero at the end of the year after closing entries revenue is now once again zero expenses on January 1 zero December 31st, after closing entry, zero. Dividends, zero on 1-1. One, one. After closing entries on December 31st, zero. Okay, that's, that's, where, that's where we're going with this. Now, buildings, a million dollars on January 1. What historical costs, what they paid for it. The only difference between January 1 and the end of the year is still a million for the historical cost. The only difference is that accumulated depreciation has increased because we've depreciated that building more during the year. So the book value has gone down. That's it. Cash has a balance. Accounts payable. Accounts receivable. They can all have a balance. They don't have to go to zero. Revenue, expenses, dividends, temporary. They have to be returned to a balance of zero. All right, so... And I say return because I mean that they started off at the beginning of the year at zero. So that's what we mean by temporary. They need to get back to where they started, which is a zero balance. So closing entries are what we do to close the account or make the account have a, a ending balance of zero. All right, so let's work our way through this. So what we're doing, let's say we have, I'm going to do two T, oh goodness, two T accounts. We'll do revenue and we'll do income summary. All right, so revenue and income summary. Well, we know that during the year we had $20,000 in revenue. Revenue is a temporary account and we need it to be a zero balance. So we'll close it out, which means we have to debit revenue, $20,000, and we'll credit income summary for $20,000. Okay. Also, the revenue, remember ADE, CLR, revenue. Revenue's normal balance is a credit. To close it, it has to be the opposite or a debit so that's the t account for this entry let's just go back so the revenue was here again also not again but also we're closing out from dividends down 
from dividends down. These are all our temporary accounts. Permanent. And then the line's right here. Actually, let me just water. I think I can. The line's right here. So this is, oh, goodness gracious, a lot. So the line's right here. Well, I didn't mean to make it that big. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, let's try that one more time. I didn't realize it could be that big. All right, let's try it again. So the, the line's right here. Permanent, temporary, below the line. Okay, these are temporary. These are permanent. In other words, these accounts need to be closed. And what we mean by that is they have dollar amounts, right? They all have numbers. We want that balance not to be 20000 but to be zero, not to be 7500 but to be zero. I think you get the idea. So the first one we close is revenue. And that's the entry there. And it always helps me. I don't remember what income summary is. I just remember that to close revenue, it has to be the opposite. Normal balance is credit, so I've got a debit. And then the other, the only credit will be an income summary. So when we close expenses, the only debit is an income summary. And you guys know that expenses, the normal balance is a debit. So to close them, it has to be the opposite or a credit. So these are all credited. Now, I'm just going to do one. We'll do wage expense. I'm just going to leave it red since I was already on it. And wage expense, before we close it, has a balance of 7500 And if you think about it, also, next year we don't want this $7,500 carrying over to next year. We want to start scratch from fresh, right? We want to know what expenses are just for next year, not this year and last year. So it has to go to zero. So the only way to make this to go to zero, oh goodness, the only way to make it go to zero is to debit it, credit it for $7,500. Now it has a zero balance. And we could do each one of the expense accounts the same way. All of them credited. And now we have a $13,300 debit to income summary. Now, if we asked you what the balance was, right now you would say credit $6,700, right? And hopefully you're thinking, that number sure is familiar. Where have I heard that from? Hopefully you're thinking that. It's net income. net income again you know after you close right all the revenue and expense accounts you are you have net income and remember the uh, retained earnings statement remember the retained earnings statement we put where did it go? retained earnings we put net income into retained earnings right and we take dividends out of retained earnings so that's the last two entries so we need income summary to go to zero. We need a, you know, I have not figured out why it is doing that in these videos. So they give me something to do tomorrow. So we have to debit income summary and now it'll have a zero balance. And if we debit income summary, what are we crediting? We're gonna credit retain earnings. Does that make sense that we're crediting retained earnings? I hope so because we're increasing retained earnings. We had net income, so in retained earnings has to go up. And retained, oh, I tell you one thing, it went past pleasant, uh, a pleasant annoyance or an unpleasant annoyance to just off the charts aggravating with that one. All right, so we have to credit retained earnings. It's equity, and equity has a normal balance of credit so when we increase retained earnings we, we we credit it and I recall again and hopefully you do that we had a net income or an increase net income or an increase to retained earnings and retained earnings increased to 21.5 one last thing not all companies pay dividends so some com some companies 
will only have three closing entries. If they have paid cash dividends, they'll have that fourth one. And that's why it's fourth, because sometimes we don't pay it. Sometimes companies don't pay it. Sometimes companies are great companies, and they hit a bad lick, and they don't pay cash dividends. All right. In this case, they do. And dividends is a contra equity account. We've used that term several times. I think I just spelled that wrong. And it had a $3,000 debit balance. It's temporary. It needs to be to zero because we only want to know what dividends are paid next year and, and next year. We don't want to know anything about dividends being paid next year. They were paid this year. It has to go to zero balance. I'll put the zero under the column where the normal balance is. I, I said I was going to do that, and I, I did the opposite. I was looking at the 3,000. All right, and if we credit dividends, we're going to debit retained earnings. And before I do anything else, does that not make sense? That we're going to... Debit retained earnings is the opposite of the normal balance, so it actually lowers retained earnings. Well, there's one thing I didn't put in the retained earnings right here in the T account, and that was the beginning balance of retained earnings. And the problem said to go here, so I will, even though I could go to the retained earnings statement. 14800 is the beginning balance. So please don't do that funny looking keyboard. All right, so 14,800, I'm gonna do it with you. Hopefully you have your calculator and you're doing it with me. So the opening or the beginning balance, retained earnings, the beginning balance, I'll put BB for, that's not like, you know, the little Red Rider movie thing. Um, you know, shoot your eye out. No, that's beginning balance plus net income, 6,700 minus dividends, 3000 should have an ending balance of 18500 and hopefully that will match the retained earnings statement and it does so let's recap this is basically the retained earnings statement the statement of retained earnings right It is. So let's look at the steps. We close our service, we close revenue, and basically it goes in the income summary. We close expenses and it goes in the income summary. 13.3. Then we close the difference, the balance in the income summary. So if it's a credit balance, that's net income, and that goes to increase retained earnings. And we close, if they pay cash dividends, they don't have to, but if they do, well, we will credit for the closing entry dividends and then we'll debit retained earnings, which makes sense because that lowers retained earnings. And that's what we've done on the statement of retained earnings statement. Remember, dividends lowers retained earnings while net income increases it. And that's how these closing entries work in a fairly quick um, video. You might have to watch this. Look, you might have to watch these videos a couple of times and turn on closed captioning, slow them down, speed it up, whatever you want. Um, I'm going to work extra for practice. Um, but I will tell you this revenue and then expenses which you should remember because that's the format we have on the income statement right we take revenue and then expenses so follow that then you got to deal with the difference either net income or net loss here this is net income debit summary credit retained earnings if it was a net loss we would debit retained earnings which makes sense because we're lowering retained earnings net loss and then we would Credit income summary, only if it's lost. What you see here is if there's a net income. And then if we have dividends paid out, there you go, that's what we do. And you wanna follow those closing entries in that order. It just works, makes more sense. If you have any questions, please email me.